Hey everybody, Mr. Record here, and we are continuing our discussion on finding limits graphically. And if you had a chance to watch the last video, we had a little bit of an introduction to limits where we uh, used a table of values, which uh, was very handy. And uh, oftentimes that will go by the name of finding a limit numerically. But in this particular case, you may not necessarily have the function's um, name. You won't know exactly what the expression is that represents the particular function, but yet you will have a graph to rely on. And typically speaking, it is one of the easiest ways to find a limit. It can be a little weird and tricky at first, uh, but if you pay real close attention, you should have no trouble. So we're going to take a look here at uh, a few examples. Um, our example one is a graph that certainly has some kind of a step discontinuity to it. And we have four different limits here to find. Now, the first limit is the limit as x approaches 1 with this little sort of a negative sign after the 1. Uh, that is not sort of a dyslexic way to say negative 1. We do indeed uh, look at this x as approaching positive 1, but we do it from the left side. The minus that's right after that 1 indicates this x will approach 1 from the left. So that makes things a little easy on us. So if we go to this particular graph and we know that this is our target, right? This is our destination, if you will, but we can only go towards that destination on the curve and on particularly the left side of the curve. So if I start here on the curve that's left of one and I travel along it, I will find myself getting larger and larger with my y values until I get to this very obscure destination, an open circle, which is a place that I can't really visit. But nonetheless, I am increasing my value of x, getting closer to 1, but at the same time, my y value is getting closer to 1 as well. So the answer to this particular limit would be 1. It's very easy to get deceived and say, well, no, no, the answer is 2, because we have this defined point up here. But that's not the question. Right? We really have no means of arriving at this particular portion of this curve or of this graph, if you will. All right, let's continue to look at a, the other parts for this. For the limit here as x approaches 1 from the right, it's the same kind of a philosophy. We have what's called a one-sided limit. So we're going to travel along this graph to the right of 1. And as I get close to 1, my x values, you can see, are getting smaller. I'm now at 3, and now I'm at 2. But what are my y values doing? Well, the whole time, they're not changing. But what's most important to realize is where I am at my final destination. In this particular case, I can physically arrive at 1, even though it's not important to say that I have to get there. The limit is more of like the journey, not so much the destination. But seeing as how my y values have been pretty consistent at 2, it's safe to say that I will still have 2 for my y value. Okay? Again, stay with this. I know that this is very strange. If this is the first video that you've ever watched about finding limits, particularly graphically, it's a very different kind of situation. Now, if you look at this third limit question, find the limit of f of x as x approaches 1. Here there is no minus or plus after the 1, which means we can now approach 1 from the both sides simultaneously. So if you picture this blue maneuvering and the green maneuvering done simultaneously, the question that I always pose to my students is, will your fingers come together if you trace along the graph? Well, you can see that one finger is going to approach positive 1 for your y value, and your other finger would approach 2 for your y value. Those are not the same answer. And it's pretty easy to kind of rely on that because that is partially the definition of a limit. If the two one-sided limits do not agree with each other, then the limit 
as you approach that particular X value from both sides at the same time will not exist. And we're going to go ahead and abbreviate does not exist with DNE. All right, I'm going to write that here just so that we realize that, but the blanks aren't large enough to probably write the whole phrase. Universally, DNE is accepted. If you write that on the advanced placement test, I promise you that the readers will give you credit. And then when we look at the final piece here, F of one, well, believe it or not, that has absolutely nothing to do with calculus. That is an algebra idea, a coordinate geometry idea, and it's just asking you, hey, what is the y value on the graph if the x value happens to be 1? And you can see that when we have x equaling 1, there is a closed-in circle for the upper portion of the curve, and that y value would happen to be 2. And so that would be our answer to that question. It, it does incidentally match the limit as x approaches one from the right but that's just merely coincidental in this particular case all right let's go ahead and take a look at example two and see if um, this particular graph um, allows you to understand just a little bit better once again our first limit asks us to let the x approach one from the left so i'll use the same sort of coloring scheme and in blue I'm going to be on our curve, on our graph, but I'm going to let the x value get closer and closer and closer to positive 1, but from the left side. What seems to be <laughs> my y destination, or what does the y value become? Well, the answer, negative 1. Let's take a look at the x approaching 1 from the right side. In green, I'll be over on this part of the curve approaching positive 1, but, the, but this time from the right side, I'm seeing that my y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but then I finally get to a point where they seem to kind of level off and approach the value positive 1. Okay. Keep in mind, the answer to your limit questions are always going to be some type of a y value. Okay. Let's look at this third part. What is the limit as x approaches 1 from both sides at the same time? Well, once again, your two answers here in red and, I'm sorry, in blue and green do not agree with each other. So that means you can say that this limit does not exist. Now, do not get fooled by this guy right here. It's easy to say, oh, wait a minute, I have a value on the coordinate plane where an x is 1, obviously the y would be 0, but that has absolutely nothing to do with your limit. In other words, there's no way just to jump right from these portions of your curve to that uh, particular coordinate point, not when you're finding the limits. So when you do answer f of 1, you can just see, oh, well, the y value is 0. So we have four unique answers for these four particular questions. Okay, scroll down here and let's take a look at example three and four. Oops, sorry, they would be on the next page. For example three, it's again, it's a, it's a graph with a discontinuity, but the same similar kinds of limit questions are being asked. What is the limit of the function as x approaches one from the left? Well, we're going to travel once again on our graph from the left side. Let's see if we can get to that location. Yep, the y values are getting larger and larger and larger, and I get to a point where I'm just about closing in on that open circle, and I can feel that my y value is positive 1. Let's let x approach 1 from the right side. So in green, I'm letting the x values get smaller and smaller as they approach 1 from the right, and my y value is getting larger and larger to a point where I can say, I think it's equal to positive 1, and that is exactly right. Now, to answer the third question, because your two one-sided limits agree with one another, that means you can declare the answer to the double-sided limit to be that same value. In other words, if you were to trace along this curve simultaneously with both fingers, your fingers 
well, I don't want to say they come together in touch because that's not true. I tease my students and I say, this open circle is not like a roundabout. All right, it is a hole in the graph, but your fingers will come so infinitesimally close to one another that you can say for all intents and purposes is that they, they do touch. And when they do touch, we can say that the Y value is our limit. Okay, probably not a very formal way to maybe describe this, all right? But I think it is a way that students can, can rely on it and, and, and gain assistance if they're having trouble. Now for f of one, the algebra question, we have to answer the question, hey, is there a y value anywhere on the curve when x is one? Or anywhere in the coordinate plane for that matter. And it turns out that if you look all the way throughout this vertical line when x is one, there's never going to be a, a, a point on the graph. This open circle sort of prohibits that from happening. So we would say, oh, you could say undefined, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of different ways, but I, I, it does not exist. It would be acceptable. But usually in the case of trying to figure out whether or not a, a, a value does exist on, on a, a function within a function, we would say that if it doesn't exist, then it's an undefined value. Okay. One more example, example four, and we'll close out the video. Once again, we have the same limit questions. Our first limit asks to find what do we have when X approaches one from the left. So we'll move along the curve on the left side of one, and we find that the Y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to a point where they would be equal to one. Once again, resist the temptation to think that the answer is negative two because that has nothing to do with the limit. As X approaches one from the right side, we move along the curve, our X values get larger and larger and larger to a point where we can say that the answer is one. So if you're sitting there thinking, hey, this is a lot like example three. Well, it is. As far as the two one-sided limits, they're the same. And for that matter, the double-sided limit is the same. So far, example four and example three have the exact same answers. But where they differ is the question f of one. You can see now in example four that there is a point, although a point sort of located off of the the, the, the two line segments, but it is still a point that is part of the graph f of x. And we can see that its y value is negative two. And that would be the answer to f of one. Okay, and within all of this information, you, you are sort of being uh, led to, to discover the actual you know, reasoning uh, why a, a function's limit will exist. And more importantly, later on, uh, what it takes for a function to be continuous or discontinuous, and that's going to be discussed in a future video. Anyhow, I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.